Starving, suffocated brain cells. Swimming in sugar, by the way. Toxicity. This is, this, by, this is really a problem when it comes to Alzheimer's disease. Is insulin and sugar. And I am not going to rip on sugar any more than I have to. Because I'm a sugar addict as much as anybody. You know, if I haven't had... If I'm hypoglycemic, low blood sugar, I, I got the same kind of neurochemistry that we all have. We're neurochemically, neurologically hardwired to go for sugar, especially under conditions of stress, emotional stress, or physical stress, or nutritional deficiency. This is why people lose weight on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Under conditions of nutritional deficiency, you will crave sugar. Under conditions of protein deficiency, we'll crave sugar. Under conditions of micronutrient deficiency, B vitamin deficiency, we will crave sugar. So if you want to lose weight, and sugar is the number one reason why, we're, why we gain weight, want to lose weight, get on a nutritional supplement program. You want to lose weight, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You want to lose weight, eat more protein. You want to lose weight, make sure you're using, you're uh, focusing on digestive health using strategies for digestive health, micro, uh, uh, probiotics support the microbiome, digestive enzymes, the Fucoid Z. And by the way, don't underestimate the importance of emotional stress and mental stress when it comes to weight loss. Yesterday, uh, last week, we read a study about stress and, and weight gain. This is one of the major reasons why we gain weight. Fi uh, emotional stress, mental stress, in addition to physiologic stress. The conventional wisdom about Alzheimer's disease is that it's a buildup in the brain of beta amyloid plaque, and now doctors have a new boogeyman. They call it tau protein. Others tell you it's fluoride and aluminum, and uh, the, latest, the latest boogeyman is chloride and uh, chlorine and fluoride. Of course, then you get a magic formula that helps you get rid of fluoride or a filter that gets rid of fluoride. I'm not saying fluoride's good, by the way. Fluoride definitely has effects on the brain. That's part of the whole toxicity profile. So it's the toxicity that we've, that we've inoculated or injected into our environment. I, absolutely, that's got an effect. But it doesn't do us any good to, to, to uh, moan about chemtrails and fluoride in the water and chlorine in the water and toxicity when we're intentionally toxing out our bodies. Alzheimer's disease involves fibers, true. But fibrosis is a classic way that uh, cells manifest their breakdown. And actually, it actually might be, and I'm not convinced, I, I'm thinking here, fibrosis, which is the secretion of fibers, pulmonary fibrosis in the lungs, cystic fibrosis in the pancreas, fibrosis in the brain, fibrosis in breasts and ovaries and for women. I'm thinking that fibrosis may not necessarily be a dysfunction. It may be one of the ways the cell defends or protects against broken tissue, or against destroyed tissue. Maybe the, the brain is rotting so much that cells secrete fibers as a way of patching up the rot. Sort of like caulking in a, in a broken down wall or a broken down building. In any case, yes, fibrosis is involved, but fibrosis follows toxicity. Fibrosis follows sickness. And don't underestimate the importance of estrogen. Estrogen is really interesting stuff, folks, and we don't really talk about it the way we should be talking about it. Estrogen is associated with inflammation and toxicity and protecting yourself from estrogen. Now, that's something that could be important, and vitamin E is estrogen protective. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got a few lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get to you here in, uh, in just a moment. Memory loss associated with Alzheimer's reversed. I love this one. You can reverse memory loss. This is a study done from UCLA. Uh, and you know how they did it? A 36-point therapeutic program involving diet. Hello, where'd you hear that before? Nutritional supplementation, exercise, optimization of sleep. I love that one. Do you know there's a very important connection between lack of sleep and a toxic buildup of chemicals in the brain? For everybody, really, but especially for Alzheimer's from... Uh, from the journal Nature Neuroscience. This is from June of last year. Sleep may be a missing piece in the Alzheimer's disease puzzle. Sleep, particularly a deficit of, the, of a deep restorative sleep, is a channel through which the proteins, the tangles, believed to trigger Alzheimer's disease attacks the brain's memory. So again, you see, it's not the tangles, it's not the nerves, it's not the fibers, 
It's the stuff that precedes it. That's really the key. We don't see the preceding causes. All effects have causes, but sometimes those causes are invisible. In fact, they're always invisible. In the case of cancer, all cancer begins with one cell. All, really, all disease begins with one cell, then two cells, then three cells. But because there's so many cells and because they're so small, we don't notice it. But rest assured, behind every effect, every symptom, every sign of a degenerative disease, whether it's pain or, or in the case of Alzheimer's, cognitive problems, there are invisible causes. That's the trick right there, folks. We've got to learn to see or to sense invisible causes. We've got to become attuned to the invisible world. That's why people are marginalized thoughts and emotions and feelings and spirituality. This is why we marginalize and we're so dismissive of these ideas. Your doctor probably thinks it's a joke. Oh, your thoughts affect your reality. Ha, 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 ha. Your, your feelings affect your reality. Ha, they don't do it as much anymore because now it's been scientifically shown and there's actually scientific journals that talk about the link between emotions and the immune system, for example. But they used to, and, and a lot of them still do, because we don't notice the invisible world, because we live in this materialistic world, which is a, a vestige of the Enlightenment 600 years ago. That's when science really got going, about 600 years ago. And actually, it was a response to the, the real crazy spirituality of the Middle Ages, of the Dark Ages. In the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages, they knew about the invisible world, but they had kind of silly feelings about it. They didn't really know about it. They, had, they attributed disease to clouds in the air or to evil gods or to, I read this book once uh, in, in the Middle Ages, one of the causes of disease was the number nine. I don't know how that worked, but that's what it said in this book anyway. Or little elves that shot arrows at you. I'm not kidding you. This is what they really thought, little elves that shot arrows at you. So. Science was a response to that kind of crazy de uh, uh, deification of the invisible, crazy honoring of the invisible. But today, we got to come full circle and we got to recognize that thoughts and feelings have invisible energy associated with them. Yes, every time you think a thought, there's energy that's emitted from your brain. You can, you can detect it with an EEG machine, an electroencephalogram machine. You can actually detect your thoughts. There's thoughts that come off, there's energy that comes off of our head after we think, or as we're thinking thoughts, and that same energy affects our body. It affects the shape of our bodies. It affects the shape of our cells. Now that's really where you can have an effect on disease. But to depend on just what we could see with our own eyes, this materialistic way that, that medicine works on the body, it doesn't serve us, and the evidence is in the utter failure of the medical model when it comes to uh, addressing degenerative health challenges. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, or prescription drugs, or skin health issues, or formulations, or ingredients, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to uh, contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Stephen in PA, what's going on? Good morning, buddy. Good morning, Ben. Ben, uh, I have uh, oh, basically on those uh, little elves that shoot the... Uh, right. Uh, I heard on, uh, uh, there was witnesses back when the Black Plague was going through Europe that, uh, the, you know, the Grim Reaper with the uh, sickle. That yeah, they it saw him. Uh, you know, people want uh, spraying uh, sprayers uh, with, like, uh, spraying, uh, you know, agricultural sprayers, spraying mist. To get rid of the Grim Reaper or something? No, 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 to, uh, the, I guess maybe, who knows, to start it or whatever, I don't know. Okay. This but is what anyway. they believed. That they didn't know about germs. Germs were invisible. They had no idea. They didn't even know what rotting was. They would dump their, their excrement in their front lawns because they didn't understand that there were these invisible components to the disease process. So, yeah, it, we're, we're, not, we're not much better today. Is all well, that's what I, uh, I'm calling to, to discuss the, uh, uh, the, uh, the silent signaling uh, proteins. I had uh, listened to another show where uh, about old, uh, regarding old age and aging. Uh, I believe they call it sen sentience. Sentience, uh, yes. Senescence. When, uh, senescence. 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 In the uh, uh, the cert uh, cert uh, signaling uh, proteins, there's a cert one. Those are seven. genetics. Those are genes. The cert gene, yes. And uh, what they're finding out now is this uh, one uh, uh, nutrient called NAD plus, okay. uh, uh, which is also called 
involved Absolutely. in energy production. It's part of B vitamins. It's part of niacin, nicotinamide, yeah. adenosine, something or another. It's a yeah, niacin it's a derivative. Nicotinamide uh, riboside. Okay. And that is, uh, it's a form of vitamin B3. But what, are they, but what are they getting at here? What's the major point what here, Steve? What they're saying is that these, uh, <clears throat> these uh, CERC genes, uh, let me see, three of them, uh, there's, there's seven of them, three, four, and five uh, enhance the mitochondria. Well, you see, but cellular. here's the thing, Stephen. You're getting way too in-depth. I mean, it's fun, and it's interesting, but for somebody who has Alzheimer's disease, they don't need to know about okay. CERT genes and NAD, And although niacin can be very helpful for the brain, by the way, very important yeah, brain. Yeah, I don't know if niacin even has this uh, nicotinamide uh, ribosite. Nicotinamide is niacin. Nicotinamide is a derivative of niacin. Okay, it's Vitamin a form B3. of uh, B3, but the, yes. this particular stuff... It, uh, it, it halts the uh, aging. It, it, uh, it stops, I guess, the, the environment of the cell. It, becomes, it starts putting out these toxins. What, what is the toxins. stuff, though? What is the stuff, Steve? Is it the NAD you're talking about? Yeah. The, yeah, it's a nicotinamide, a riboside is the exact uh, okay. name of the uh, supplement. All right, well, yeah. here's the deal. You don't need nicotine. They're trying to sell that, maybe, but here's what you want to do. Get yourself some niacin, because that really is important. By the time you get to these fine derivatives, these, these refined derivatives of the niacin, the body has many mechanisms for controlling that, which you want to give your body the precursors, so then let the body make the NAD. And the major precursors are the B vitamins. That's why I call them the brain vitamins. The B vitamins are the brain vitamins, particularly niacin, by the way. You know, if you have Asperger's syndrome or social anxiety syndrome or any anxiety issues, high doses of nicotinamide, high doses of niacin have been shown to help calm the brain down. Uh, niacin's involved in the production of serotonin, an important brain chemical, tryptophan. Uh, there's a relationship between niacin and tryptophan, which is an important brain amino acid. So point well taken, Stephen. Niacin is very important for the brain, as, is all, as are all the B vitamins. I'm going to let you and, go, buddy, unless you have... One, one question before you yes, go. Sir. But the, uh, niacin is, is a niacinamide. It's not nicotinamide. Uh, they're but very, very similar, extremely similar to each other. Nicotinic acid, niacinamide, niacin, they're pretty darn close. For all intents and purposes, they're vitamin B3. Stephen, have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you for bringing Thank that you, up, brother. my friend. Bye. Take care. Okay, hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Side. Let's go to Virginia in Ohio. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, Virginia. Hello. Hello, hello. What's um, cooking? Yeah, I've been on Longevity products for a couple years now, okay. and I'm having some skin issues. Okay, tell me about them, Virginia. Okay, um, probably for 30 years or so, my palms of my hands are dry and they're cracked. Got it. And itchy. Just your and palms? Anywhere else uh, in the body? No, no. The last um, probably three years, uh, I've had where my buttocks rub together. Okay. There is dry. Got it. it it's all dry Here's there. Here's the deal. And let me, let, let's explain, let me explain to you how that works, okay? Okay. When you look at your skin, it just looks like one thing, but you got to zoom in with your x-ray vision, your imaginary x-ray vision, and see layers. What you're explaining there, the way you're describing your condition, is the top layers of that skin. Hey, can, uh, Keith, will you turn that, turn that down? Keith, please. I'm having a, uh, an echo. Can you hear an echo there, Virginia? No, no. Okay, I'll just have to deal. Uh, oh, maybe you have your radio on. No. Your radio on. No. No. All right, I'll have to deal with it then. All right, so it's, if you want to look at your skin, you'll see to, uh, you have to picture in your imagination layers. What you're explaining is the top layer is not growing correctly, period. This has to do with fats and fatty vitamins. Any condition on the surface of the skin, the way you're explaining, where, where it doesn't develop appropriately, that's called eczema, by the way, but it can also, it can also be something like dry, flaky skin, you want to consider fats and fatty vitamins. And that, and that means, means digestion, digestion or absorption, absorption of fats and fatty vitamins and intake of them. So number one, all right, Virginia, you there? Do we have Virginia? Yes. Okay, number one, uh, vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day. Number two, vitamin D, five, I, I can't, I, I'm just going to deal with it here for a second, Keith, don't worry about it. Uh, 5,000 international units a day of vitamin D, 400 international units a day of vitamin E. 
Make sure you're taking your ultimate EFAs with all of that. All the, the A and the D and the E, you're going to have to take extra. 